Hey guys, Zach from RB Digital. I'm sitting here today with Manic, the founder of Icyware. Thanks for taking the time to do anything today, buddy. Appreciate you coming by, man. You awesome. don't come here too often. No, no, yeah. Sorry. always on the road. Mm. <laughs> um, so yeah, listen, I, I'd love to you know share with our audience a little bit about your story. You have some really cool roots. Mm -hmm. Do you mind just touching on how long ago you started and, and what that business looked like? 100%. We started back in 2018 as a vintage clothing store. We were selling clothes from like the 80s, the 90s. At that time, I was a university student at Laurier. So I was booking appointments online. People were coming into like literally my closet and shopping out of like my clothes, clothes I was finding at the thrift stores. That was the starting point. Cool. Um, I remember last time I was here, maybe six months ago, this, this looked really different. I mean, looking around, you don't really see any more vintage clothing. Mm -hmm. um, looks like you're kind of moving out of that direction if you haven't already completely. Yeah. Why did you decide, hey, you know what, vintage is, is not for me anymore and I want to kind of move in a different direction? The problem with selling vintage is like you don't control your supply. You walk into thrift stores, you walk into places where like they're selling used stock and you have no idea what product you might get. So for me, like I always had a knack for graphic design. I always wanted to make clothes. Cool, cool. And I mean, one thing that I noticed when I was first here, you know, you're selling all your one-off pieces on the web. Mm. And like, there's work in that because you guys are literally photographing each piece to get on the website, right? Yeah. So I always thought that that concept was kind of crazy, you know, coming back from, from my background in POD and having our own Etsy stores and Shopify stores, mm -hmm. you know, we would make a design, we put in the work on, on making a really good listing, but then you could sell that for years, right? Mm -hmm. So when you show me that, I'm like, oh man, that's kind of tough. So I, I could definitely see that. And you know, you have people coming in and, and they love something, but it's like, oh, sorry, man, it only comes in a large, you know? Yeah. So I could definitely see that that being a challenge. Um, you know, looking around today, you, you now have DTF, mm -hmm. embroidery, uh, and DTG in-house. Mm -hmm. um, to my understanding, when you first started doing your designs, you were mostly outsourcing that, is that correct? We were, local shops nearby, some overseas. Okay, yeah. why did you decide it was important to bring it in-house? You know, when you're sourcing overseas, like from the point of you coming up with a design to you getting it can take about one to two months. Yeah. And then by the time you get it, do you even like that product? Do you even want to sell it? So that was the issue overseas. And then locally, it was a quality issue. Yeah. Tons of people locally had like, you know, now that I realize they had either Chinese machines or they had printing production issues where like they'd promise you a timeline, but they wouldn't be able to deliver by that, you know, date that they gave you. Sure. So running into these issues, I'm like, I have to control my work myself. Yeah. I mean, we were in a very similar position when I started my, you know, printing business, we were outsourcing everything. Mm. And like you said, missed timelines, poor quality. Um, you just weren't getting like the same TLC that we would have if we were doing it ourselves. Mm. So, and obviously reducing costs, you know, so that faster turnaround times. Um, I mean, your business, I think you guys, and I think it's something else you should touch on, like what is your niche, you know, like, is it streetwear? I mean, you see they got a lot of cool vintage retro, like is is that the bulk of what you're doing? And, and that, that again, sometimes it's just hot things that are going in the market. Mm -hmm. You gotta be able to jump on it right away, which you could do with, you know, DTG, um, and basically get on trends and get the product out really quick. 100%. We started off obviously selling vintage. So when we were making our own clothes, we wanted to make vintage inspired stuff. Things that like looked like they were vintage, but they were like brand new and like it was a fresh brand. So, you know, people still come in through our doors and they're like, hey, like I want some vintage Nike, I want vintage Adidas. But they end up settling for one of our graphic tees because they still feel like the nostalgic energy from what we saw now. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, and something you do very well. And, and again, you have being able to control, you know, for example, the type of you print, your prints that you do, mm. you know, you're not laying down a ton of white, you know what I mean? As your underbase, because you want it to have that kind of vintagey feel. Mm -hmm. So again, you having the control of having the equipment in house allows you to like really hit the feeling that you're trying to get out of your prints, right? For sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, looking around, you, you you do got the best of the best, you know, in every single category. You got Tajima for embroidery, mm -hmm. Brother for DTG, Mamaki for DTF. Clearly investing in high quality equipment is important to you. Um, why is that? Why do you feel like you got to bring in, you know, only the best equipment? For sure. For me, it's like there was a lot of options to get machines of like other brands early on. But, you know, when you do the research to make sure what machines you have, you know that if you have the best equipment, you'll come up with the best product. A happy customer is a returning customer is what I've always believed in. So we've always wanted to double down on the right machines to make sure like the consistency of our product remained the same, whether it was day one or it was like, you know, two years in. Yeah, definitely. 
I mean, I remember when you first came in and you bought the, the GTX Pro, you knew everything about that machine. So you, you really spent the time to figure out, hey, who's the market leader in this category? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is this the machine that I want to move ahead with? You started off with one Pro, although I told you to go with the Pro B because mm -hmm. your prints were massive and yeah. you ended up spending twice as much on your ink, <laughs> but you quickly realized you know, you, you realize, hey, I'm, I'm spending a lot of money here. Since then, you've added two more Pro Bs. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you got rid of the GTX Pro just because, again, the ink costs were too high mm -hmm. and you're planning on continuing to add more Pro Bs to your fleet. Exactly. That's the plan right now, yeah. yeah. Like early on, you start off with a machine that you shouldn't have gotten when you could have just doubled down on the machine you should have got from day one. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've always been a firm believer in that, you know, when I uh, was building out my POD business and I'd have these, you know, pods of brothers, you know, at the time we would uh, be able to put 12 brothers around one dryer. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started, I didn't have 12 brothers, but I bought a dryer to be able to support the 12 brothers, you mm -hmm. know, uh, for the future. So I've always been uh, a firm believer in investing in the future. If you can, I mean, look, at the end of the day, sometimes you can, you're limited by budget, you can't get approved by leasing, whatever the case is. But if you have the opportunity and you believe in your business and you believe that you're going to grow, mm -hmm. it always makes sense to invest in better equipment, right? So 100%. You buy once, you cry once, yeah, you know, you deal exactly. with it just one time, right? Yeah. And you have obviously unmatched support with, with RB, right? Totally. You guys are taking care of it. Uh, warranty is like no other. If I buy a machine overseas and I try to troubleshoot it, I'm not going to have my production running up until someone tries to deal with that issue. Yeah, we, we yeah. see that all the time. We have customers that buy brand new embroider machines and from day one, they can never get a good hat. They can't pull off 3D pop. Um, and it's a shame because at the end of the day, you know, you're not a technician, right? Mm -hmm. um, you are focusing on sales. That's what's going to make you money. So if you're spending the entire day trying to fix a Chinese DTF machine, um, or trying to talk to China at 11 o'clock at night because that's when they're up saying, hey, listen, I, you know, I need some support. Mm -hmm. uh, you're focusing on the wrong things, in my opinion. You know, um, at the end of the day, investing a little bit better in, in quality and local support is going to take you a lot farther, right? That's so. no doubt. Yeah. Like over the last like two years since we've had machines, we've had maybe a couple issues yeah. and having the ability to deal with them right away has kept my production running. It's kept my obviously sanity overnight while I'm sleeping and our you know warehouse is still up and up and running production still going yeah. so having that clear sense of ability to be able to like not worry about production is it's worth it yeah priceless yeah um so talking about you know your original business model mm -hmm. icyware was your brand it's doing really well for you um since then you've launched ic studios yeah right uh, let's talk a little bit about that and, and why you decided that that was a direction that you want to go in yeah so we started off buying machines just to make garments for our retail brand and then people started to figure out that we had machines you know customers would walk in house and they'd see that hey you have an embroidery machine you got a dtf printer like what's going on in the back here yeah and as you can tell right here like our windows are open and people can clearly see what's going on in the back so it led to us you know getting some clients that we were taking on uh you know celebrity clients you know we deal with a lot of um work for like Punjabi artists people overseas oh, cool. and stuff um, and just managing their production kind of led to us wanting to launch our own production company. So now we're doing on like an application basis only. We're taking on brands, we're taking on influencers, and we're managing their production end to end. It's like a full kind of creative treatment we do for every person now. Yeah, so it's more of a boutique service. You guys are not offering contract printing right now. You know, if somebody wants to do, you know, 10,000 t-shirts for a charity or something, you're not, you're not touching that yet. Not yet, no, yeah. not yet. Cool. Um, I think another, Thing that i've noticed is that you've been able to crack into getting your brand into you know retail that's that's something that's very challenging for a lot of people right mm -hmm. uh, i mean retail is usually you know accustomed to picking up big brands that already have a big following mm -hmm. um how is that looking for you you've got into some big places already how do you like printing for these these retail chains yeah man, it's been a it's been a real blessing because we had partnerships with a company called simon's before you know they were buying up our vintage prior to oh they were yeah oh cool. so we started off putting vintage in their 16 stores across canada and you know they come by our warehouse all the time they check in on us you know they're based in montreal so they're pretty close and they came in they saw our gtx pro they saw us making teas and they were like yo what's going on here and they picked up a few of our styles they started to sell really well 
And now over the last like eight months, we've been putting crazy amount of shirts on a weekly basis into their stores. Yeah, I mean, looking back there, I just see like just pumping the same design over and over again. So we'll they'll double down on styles. Like if it starts to sell, like they'll continue restocking it. And again, that's the strength that you have over the other brands because they can't get the instant replenishment. You know, they mm -hmm. pop it in order on Monday, you can probably get it to them before the end of the week, right? Yeah, we, if we get a PO today, we can get it done by two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fantastic. So again, that's another, you know, a uh, bit of leverage that you have over some of the other competitors that are, you know, kind of in there as well, right? So, For sure. Um, you guys actually, I, I remember in Christmas, you were at uh, the Christmas, Christmas market as well. I was there with my wife and my son and mm -hmm. just cruising and I'm like, oh, I know those guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, is that the, have you done other events like that too? How was that? Was it successful? Will you be doing more of that this year? Yeah, live printing is really solid with DTG. Mm -hmm. So we got asked by Yorkdale to just come by and set up a machine and do some live printing for people during the holiday season. People were coming by asking for like, you know, t-shirts for their boyfriend, t-shirts for their girl, stuff like that. And uh, we're going to be running more events this year, you know, with Fairview and a couple other malls yeah, around I think the city. I, I think I saw you at, was it Square One or Sherway? You saw us actually at uh, Sherway. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Very yeah, cool. Um, I mean, you take a look at your social media like it's popping. I mean, you guys have a huge following. You're very active on there. Uh, how have you been able to scale that so quickly? Like, what's your secret sauce? You know, like what's what's been able to really uh, make Icy like a household name at, at the speed that you've been able to? Yeah, like for us, like we want to make the most engaging content possible. Like I remember early on when I was making content, someone told me like your content either has to inspire, has to educate or make people laugh. Yeah. So early on, we started making content that was like inspiring people. We take like the motivational angle and like that's still something that motivates me to just want to make content. And now we're teaching people, like now that we have these machines on our new IC Studios page, like I'm showing the machines. I'm not looking to like hide what we're doing back here. You're used to. I'm used to, I uh, used to before. Yeah, like, I used to man, hide it. Yeah. Watch, like, a, like a year ago, I'm like, yo, let's 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 shoot some content. You're like, I don't know, man. I don't want anybody to know what's going on, but this <laughs> yeah. is not the secret. I mean, the machines that you have aren't the secret, it's right? It's not. Yeah. It's how you run the machines. It's like, who is the operator and are they able to keep the machines running? Yeah. It's not so much about what machines you have. Like I can tell somebody right now, who sold me the brother, who sold me the embroidery machine. And if they buy these machines today, they might not have the same outcome. Yeah. The work still has to get put in. It's not just that. I mean, I I, I mean, I think to be honest, the production is the easier part. The harder part is getting the sales, getting in front of the customers, the marketing, like that's the secret sauce. Mm. I mean, that's why there's massive companies that outsource everything because they, they, they that's their focus. You know, that's what they want to do really well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and clearly you guys are, you guys are killing it. You guys are scaling at a, you know, incredible rate for sure and i mean it's early too in our journey right we've been at it for now two years even doing anything related to printing going from selling used clothes to now selling new clothes it's a it's been a massive journey and i'm looking to just double down on creating garments from scratch now because that's really where the market is shifting to right yeah as the cost of like used clothing goes up you know making garments is like really where my passion lies and i'm going to double down on it yeah i mean you spend a, a fair uh, amount of time traveling overseas like you were where did where, you go again i went to china vietnam and uh singapore yeah were you in bali also at one point i was in indonesia too for that's a couple right. months yeah. Yeah, yeah i remember that but as for like manufacturing that was mostly in china yeah so like what we realized is like instead of trying to get blanks locally especially for like our own retail brand it made sense for us to like build our own blanks yeah but for any work that we're doing for like shops or influencers or any other brands Typically, we're acting as an apparel decorator. Yeah. Meaning we're getting blanks locally and then we're doing the finishing here. Yeah, I mean, and the reason why you're, you're bringing, uh, you know, having custom garments made overseas is not necessarily to save money, it's for quality and I think to differentiate yourself. Mm. You know, you might want something a little bit more of a boxier tee or more of a drop shoulder, you know, something that you can't just get at, you know, Alpha Broder or SMS Activewear or, you know, Sandmark kind of thing, right? For sure, and if you can, they're gonna add a markup on it, a serious markup. Huge, yeah. Because yeah. So. it doesn't move as much, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like the Gildan 5000 that they're selling millions of units a year, right? For sure. So, and as a retail brand, you can't sell the Gildan 5000. Quality obviously is weak, and a customer's not going to come back. Yeah. But promotional items, like that's the way. Yeah. SNS, for sure. Yeah, sure. yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you can buy one piece and it arrives tomorrow, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, you've had crazy growth in a very short period of time. Uh, it's it's been a you know pretty inspiring story to see what you've been able to pull off so quick what's what's around the corner what's in the future for for ic or ic studios or whatever other ideas you got going on in your head yeah uh, we're actually thinking about expanding to the us right now so we're working on moving to florida opening up our next warehouse down there 
you know, majority of our customers already are in the U.S. You know, yeah. Canadians always been a little brother to the U.S. So yeah. I, I've known that moving to the States would push me in the right direction. So I'd say give it about a year and our next warehouse will be out there. So. Yeah, I remember what our business also was 85% U.S., 7% Canada. I mean, you're a little different because you have retail here, but when we were just doing fulfillment, 7% Canada. Mm -hmm. And the remaining 8% was like Australia, UK, Italy. Um, that was that was the bulk of it. Do you, do you actually ship out outside of North America as well? Has your brand hit overseas? We've hit overseas, but the bulk of it's coming from USA. Sure. For sure. Yeah. Luckily for us. Yeah, yeah exactly. Thanks, USA. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, listen, man, I had yeah. a great time. For sure. Appreciate you, uh, you know, letting us be a small part of your journey. We're mm -hmm. very excited to continue to watch you grow and, and be successful. Appreciate it, man. Thank Thanks. you. Have a great yeah. day. See you guys.